Hello everybody. Gage says it's empty. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Star Hill Brewery. They're up in the Crozet, Virginia, up there near Charlottesville. Uh, been to the brewery many, many moons ago, five, six, seven years ago. Went and visited the brewery a long time ago. A lot of these breweries have perfected their craft. Uh, I've actually poured uh, beer for these guys at several different uh, uh, beer events. Uh, but that's also been several years ago, too. Uh, when I first got into this, I went everywhere and poured beer for everybody. Uh, now, not so much. I'm kind of a little bit on the too busy side. Uh, anyway, uh, Beer Advocate has this listed as an American IPA. Uh, Star Hills calls this an Imperial Red Ale, a 7.7%. I don't know how close that is to actually being an Imperial or a double. Uh, I was thinking it was like 8%, but they're calling it an Imperial at 7.70. And Beer Advocate has it listed in the regular IPA category. Uh, I think it's, I'm going to go with what the guys at uh, Star Hill are saying, Imperial. 7.7 is close enough to me to be considered an Imperial IPA, Red IPA. So, And they send, every time they send me these beers, they uh, send these little laminated, I call them like placemats, uh, with all the information. It says, this Imperial Red IPA packs hot punch and high gravity, resinous flavors mingle with a complex har harmony of toasted malts used to create its dazzling red color. Evergreen and citrus notes yield a robust, Red ale with pronounced hop flavor and aroma. The malt is Pilsner, uh, mel melanonin, melanonin, M-E-L-A-N-O-I-D-I-N, -E -M -E -L -A -N -O -I -D -I -N, dark crystal, and carapa 2. Hops are Denali, Citrus, Simcoe, and Chinook. Great hops. Sats, 7.7%, 7 72 IBUs. And they even get some food pairings. Food, spicy, barbecue ribs, cheeses are Parmigiano and... Reggiano, Reggiano desserts, salted caramel, and cheesecake. And they say it's served in a non pint. Uh, I don't do beer reviews very much in a pint glass anymore. I like these total glasses that enhances the aromas. Uh, and that's basically all it says here on their little placard that they send with these beers. So uh, uh, I'll give you all the information we need to. Uh, let me get this thing down here. And if I recall, yep. It says package here in bright blue ink right here underneath the upper label of 0720017, July 20th of 2017, and the date is the 10th of August, so uh, two weeks old or so, a little, little older than that. So, uh, very fresh. I appreciate uh, them sending me these beers. Let's get a little bit of hiss, a little bit of smoke. And while I'm pouring it, I will tell you the cuisine is barbecued, cheese and pepper, Monterey, pepper jack, sharp blue cheddar, your stronger cheeses, meat, game grilled meat, and salmon, glass brush snifter, tulip oversized wine glass. I got my favorite snifter. And it says here, can be cellared. And beer I could always says that on these bigger beers. Don't sell your IPAs, whether they're red or regular or imperial. Just don't do it, guys. That's why the, they go to the trouble of putting a bottle on date. So you know how fresh the beer is and drink it as fresh as you can, guys. Very nice red mahogany color to that beer. It does look like a filtered beer. I can see the light through it. Let's get a nose to it. I'm getting the uh, nice malt, malt backbone to this. 
A little bit of caramel and toppy. The hops are not super pungent. It does not appear to me in the aroma to be a West Coast style or a New England style or anything like that. More of an East Coast style beer, guys. Nice citrusy notes, a little bit of dankness in there. But the, the, in the East Coast style, just like this one, and we had one the other day, uh, the hops in the malt are fairly balanced. The hops are not overpowering the malt, and the malt's not overpowering the hops when they're fresh. The longer this sits in the bottle, the more malty it's going to get, though. It smells pretty good, so let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, all the guys and gals at Star Hill. That is a very balanced beer, guys. The alcohol is super well hidden. Very well made beer. I'm not getting any of that 7.7%. Very well done. But like I said, it is in the East Coast style to me. The hops are not up in your face like the West Coast and New England style beers are very balanced so if you don't like that up in your hot west coast style or new england style beers this will be a good one to jump into an imperial ipa even though it's considered an imperial red it's still the alcohol is up by near eight percent but it's a very balanced beer nothing is overpowering the other very easy drinking uh, and like I said, the IBUs on this beer is 72. I am not getting that heavy of a bitterness on this beer. Very well hidden on that aspect, too, to me. Of course, I've been drinking these for years now, guys. Some of you other young bucks that's just getting into the sour may find it a little too bitter with that much IBUs. But to me, it's fairly subdued. To me, it tastes like it's in the 60s. But it's still a very pleasant beer. I'm getting a... I, I like that nice caramel uh, toppy characteristics of the red ales a lot of times that you get. But it's right out of the fridge. It's fine to open up a little bit more once it comes up to room temperature. So let's do that. Let's let it come up to room temperature. Let me sip on it for a little bit and I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. I just to the left here. A very nice, to me, transitional IPA. Something uh, in an East Coast style that doesn't have a huge amount of hops up in your face if you don't like that. Uh, even though it does have 72 IBUs, uh, it might still be a little on the bitter side for somebody that's not used to drinking IPAs, but I found it very enjoyable. Uh, I don't think it's, it's not blowing my hair back or my socks off or anything like that. A lot of the Imperial Reds are into the 8, 9, 10 percent. Uh, a lot more taste to those beers. Once you, the more malt, uh, the bigger the ABV, the, the, the more taste you use it in. I'm going to stop talking about the alcohol part of it. Uh, it takes a lot more malt and a lot more hops to balance those out. And they seem to have a lot more taste. And as your palate gets used to drinking the bigger beers and stuff, you get accustomed to drinking stuff with a lot of taste. That's why the lagers just don't cut it with me anymore. Uh, they don't have nowhere near the taste that my palate is at right now. So that's why I don't buy lagers anymore. I still review them, the people that send them to me, but I find them a little lackluster in, in the taste category, uh, other than a lot of grassy graininess. Uh, that's why I don't review a lot of Oktoberfest anymore. I've done most of those. Uh, they're, they're very low ABV beers that don't have a lot of taste. Uh, so uh, the Oktoberfest beers and... I've done just about every pumpkin beer can be done, and, and now, like I said, uh, the pumpkin beers have been on the shelves for two weeks now, uh, and we're, we're just in August, so uh, uh, I'm not interested in, in drinking any kind of pumpkin beers until October, around Halloween, that's when I'm on a pumpkin beer, and on top of that, uh, there's no pumpkins available yet, uh, as far as I know, not around here anyway, uh, so more than likely they're not even using real pumpkin, they're just using spices to give it that taste, or they're using some kind of canned or frozen pumpkin from last year or whatever. So, but anyway, this is a this is a decent beer.
it's a very tasty beer, but to me it's more of an East Coast style. So, final cut. Very nice. Uh, I think it's a well-made beer, guys. I call it super well hidden. Very nice beer. Nicely done. I wish these guys would do some kind of East Coast style, though. That would be great. I mean, uh, East Coast style, uh, New England style. Uh, something is uh, some kind of huge bomb or something. And there are breweries that are doing that in Virginia, uh, over in the Richmond area and stuff. Stuff is not being shipped here yet. And I'm telling my, uh, my subscriber, they're telling me, hey, you need to pick up this. Iceland and, and Vail uh, are doing those kind of beers, but they're not available here. And I just don't have time to drive across the state to, to give them a try. And I haven't been lucky enough for any of my subscribers to offer to send me any of those yet. So it may happen. One of these days, I'll get to try something that's made in Virginia. This is some of that New England style stuff. But anyway, either here or there. Nice beer, guys. Uh, dates on the bottle. Uh, we've got the ABV and the IBUs. Uh, all the information you need to, to, to make an educated guess uh, or what you think you're going to get when you buy this style of beer. Uh, I just don't think it's quite to the A category. I'm going to give this. Uh, but all the information is there. So it, uh, I'm going to give it a high B+. Plus. Uh, to me, I'm going to give this uh, 89. That's where I'm going to put this beer. Uh, over to Beer Advocate, they don't have any score. Only two people have commented on this beer. Uh, probably a fairly new beer, if I was guessing. I'm not sure whether they've done it before uh, or not. So, uh, and Untapped has it at 3.69, which is in their B category, not even in their B+. Plus. I think it's better than that, guys. I'm, uh, just not because it was sent to me, but uh, the way it's balanced out. It's a balanced beer. And a lot of these guys on Untapped, Beer Advocate, and even Rape Beer, unless it blows their hair back or their socks off or anything, they're not super impressed with it. And a lot of the guys that do these beer reviews are like me. They've been doing it for a while. And these East Coast style beers are a little lackluster, uh, especially if you've been drinking beers like this for five, ten years or so, or, or even bigger beers. Uh, it, it doesn't... It doesn't satisfy the palate a lot of times, so that's why they get the lower scores. So, but anyway, if you've had this one from Star here, the Resonant uh, Imperial Red Ale, let me know what you think. And until we meet again, guys, let's go see what's in the fridge.